Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of What Color Is Your Parachute? Your Guide to a Lifetime of Meaningful Work and Career Success by Richard Nelson Bowles. Is there a secret to getting the job we want? The first edition of What Color Is Your Parachute was published in 1970 and has been updated every year since then to provide job seekers with the most up-to-date information on the job market. We'll explain why traditional job hunting methods no longer work, what the parachute approach is, and why it's novel and effective in this summary, which also includes crucial strategies and actionable steps to help land your dream job. Along the way, we'll take some concrete steps to discover more about our unique strengths and abilities so that we can find work that's a good fit for us. As part of this course, we'll discover why Google has become our new digital resume, how to improve our interviewing abilities, and how to be more strategic when it comes to negotiating our pay scales. In some areas, there has been a significant shift. Finding a job now takes longer, and once we do, it's usually for a shorter period of time than in the past. Make sure you have at least three months of savings before quitting your job as full-time work is becoming increasingly difficult to find and robots are changing the way jobs are done. According to recent studies, it can take anywhere from three months to a year for a person to find a job. Even if you have a job, it may not be there forever. Workers between the ages of 18 and 24 make up nearly two-thirds of all workers who have a job for less than a year. 30% of 35-44-year-olds jobs last less than a year, and 70% of those jobs last less than five years, according to recent studies. There has been a massive increase in the number of people who have part-time jobs, such as independent contractors, consultants, and freelancers. This statistic is a new reality for everyone. According to Bulls, these jobs will make up 60% of the American workforce by 2020, making it easier for employers but more difficult for job seekers who prefer the security of a regular schedule. Companies can hire only when they need help and avoid having to worry about benefits or paid vacation time because of the global competition for freelance work. Full-time employment is becoming increasingly difficult to obtain for job seekers as technology continues to disrupt the job market. The World Economic Forum predicted in 2016 that by 2020, robots would eliminate 5 million jobs. But there's no need to be afraid of technology. While some jobs are disappearing, the majority are being reinvented. Job opportunities may be dwindling as a result of technological advancements such as artificial intelligence and robotics. Instead of taking over, Robots are simply changing the way we do our jobs. Although many jobs will be taken over by robots and artificial intelligence, AI, the good news is that there will still be plenty of opportunities for people to work together with machines. More than 11 million jobs are advertised online every month, according to recent studies. If you've been looking for a job for a while, you may wonder why you're still unsuccessful. Due to the fact that different approaches to finding a job have different success rates. We learn about the parachute approach in this book which begins with a job search by going directly to the job market to see what is available. It's tedious and time-consuming, but we do it anyway. However, this strategy has its drawbacks. When it comes to finding a job online, it only works about 4% of the time. A resume sent via email to potential employers isn't much better. Only 7% of those who try this method end up succeeding. With a 28% success rate, Using private employment agencies we can't get new jobs any longer by using the same old methods. The parachute approach is distinct. Before looking for jobs, we look within. The parachute method encourages us to discover who we are first. A lot of it boils down to figuring out what we enjoy doing and what we are good at. After this, we begin searching for organizations that fit our professional interests. Although the job search can be stressful, applicants are not beggars. Bowles reminds us that we are resourceful individuals that organizations would be fortunate to have on board. Finding a job is like dating, he claims. Do you like me? Do I like you? Both are based on the same question. Yes to both of these questions means that the next question is, do you want to go steady? This isn't how most job interviews go. As job seekers, our tendency is to cede control to our prospective employers. We put too much emphasis on whether or not they like us. Every potential employer and every potential employee have an opinion that is equally important when it comes to finding a new job. In other words, if you're a fan of them as well. This means that we're trying to figure out whether or not this is a place where we can be productive and efficient. A place where we can make a difference while also feeling useful and appreciated. When we use the parachute method, we can learn how to answer these questions and find work that is a good fit for our skill sets and interests. After all, we're all out of work, 
so why should we waste time thinking about ourselves? Research, on the other hand, supports the parachute approach. Step by step, the parachute method is effective 86% of the time. According to this method, out of 100 job seekers or career changers who follow Bowles' self-invention and job hunting methods, 86 of them are likely to land a suitable position. It can be argued that the parachute approach is more efficient in some respects. In order to avoid resigning or being fired, we must first focus on our own personal development. We're out of a job, and employers have to start the hiring process all over again, which is bad for both parties. In his best-known self-assessment, Bowles refers to it as the flower exercise. It is imperative that you complete the flower exercise prior to embarking on a job hunt. Hope, direction, and the possibility of deep work-life satisfaction are all provided by this exercise for many people. My one-page flower diagram is the best of who I am, a professor at Colorado State University said. That one piece of paper has been my constant companion since I completed it in 1982. So, what is it about? There are seven petals and a center to the famous one-page self-inventory. As a result of this, there are seven different ways to view ourselves in relation to the workplace. Seven factors, preferred working conditions, preferred people, preferred working conditions, who we are as individuals, our passions, our purpose in life, the knowledge we already possess, and our preferred salary slash responsibility are all factors that can be described through this process. One page of flower graphics can be used to illustrate seven different aspects of who we are. In the language of the workplace, it provides us with a complete picture of our personalities. You don't need a title to identify yourself in this exercise. We're a diverse group of people with a wide range of expertise. As a result, we have access to more job opportunities. There are more than one. We're able to zero in on exactly what we need. The truth is that we'll face at least 19 other equally qualified competitors. A chance to discover what sets us apart from others and how we can contribute to the conversation. It's a useful tool when things are uncertain. It gives us a chance to pause, reflect, and consider our long-term goals. The flower exercise requires the book, which you can find here. However, it might be helpful to think about which of the seven petals are most important to you, and in what order. We begin the job search after determining which occupations our flower diagram represents. Let's get down to business now. Learn how to conduct informational interviews, hear why Google is the new resume, get some interview advice, and discover the secrets of salary negotiation. When and how to use the term informative interview? If we're lucky, we'll think we've found the perfect job. Everything is laid out for you in full. Is there anything else I need to know? Do you hurry over there, or do you take your time? There's more to this story. An informational interview can help you decide if this is the right career path for you. Find out if anyone you know has any connections to this business by reaching out to someone you know. Connect with this person and learn all you can about the company. Is there anything you'd like to know about how you got into this work? Tell me about one of your favorite aspects. What's the one thing you don't like about it? No, I don't know anyone else who could help me. Do your homework before asking someone for their time, however, to be on the safe side. Be sure to start with someone at the entry point, such as a receptionist or other front of the house employee, before moving up the corporate ladder. It's a bad idea to ask the CEO simple questions that anyone else can answer. You should also be careful not to use this approach as a sales pitch to convince the company to hire you. This is merely a data collection phase. By the following day, make sure to send a thank you. Be sure to spell their names correctly as well. Compliment is important to bulls. Right now is the perfect time to Google yourself. Employers do their due diligence before making a hiring decision. They Google our names before they hire us, and what they find out about us can make or break our chances of getting the job. Consequently, if we want the job, our first task is to figure out what the interviewer will find. Google your name. Take the time to go through all of your online presence and delete anything that doesn't align with your desired brand image. Although we can post our resume on Google, we still need a traditional CV that can be emailed to potential employers or posted on a website. A word of caution, however, do not post it all over the internet in hopes that something positive will come of it. If you nail it to a tree in the middle of the town square, everyone will see it. This is not effective. Bole says. If the resumes are coming from social media sites like LinkedIn and Facebook, an employer may have to sift through as many as 116 before finding someone worth interviewing. When using their own websites to search for resumes, they typically only go through 33. If we take the initiative and choose a company that we'd like to work for, then things change. There may be as few as nine other applicants if we are able to secure a referral. Bowles refers to this person as a bridge. 
It's anyone who acts as a link between our company and the employer. Someone who knows the employer or someone who works there can recommend us and put our CV in front of the employer. Also, don't forget to include a resume and a cover letter. According to Bulls, the only aspects of our CV that employers tend to actually read are our cover letters. Our cover letter should be personal and specific to that job. You should also include a sample of your work in your application, if you have one. The next step in the job search is an interview, so here are some pointers to help you succeed. Here are our top 4 interviewing tips. Make sure you're in the right frame of mind, stick to a time limit, and prepare your answers to the most common interview questions. First and foremost, adopt a humble yet confident demeanor when interacting with others. Always keep in mind that you're not a job begging beggar. I see you as a person who can contribute to the success of the company. The next step is to alleviate the employer's anxiety about your visit by specifying how much time it will take, assuming you are successful in setting up an interview. Although it sounds strange, pick a range, such as 19 minutes. A more precise number is preferred by Bulls, 19. As if you're serious. As if your life depended on it, adhere to the time limit. Set a 17-minute silent alarm, advises Bulls, to build trust. You have two minutes to finish up. Something like that would suffice. According to what I promised, I'll be there in 19 minutes and I'm a stickler for keeping my word. Now, let's see how we respond to the question, how would you describe yourself to someone? The rest of the interview will be decided by how you answer this question. This is typically a test question. They're looking to see how you handle a situation that's both open-ended and unstructured. Any response that asks for more information is a failure. Would you like to know more about me? Employers despise this type of response. A different question is what they're trying to find in this situation. When interviewing for a job, they want to know what qualifications you have that are relevant to the position they are trying to fill. To avoid going off the rails, keep your thoughts focused on the topic at hand. Employers are particularly interested in learning about your prior work experience, especially if it is relevant to the position being considered. Make a list of the job's most critical requirements and include those in your answer. Finally, keep in mind that this conversation is a two-way street. You need to know exactly what the job entails and whether or not these tasks are something you enjoy doing. What are the skills that a top employee in this position would require? This enables you to discover what abilities you might require to be successful in such a position. Despite your progress, there's one more thing to agree on, your paycheck. It is a good idea to wait until the end of the interview process before discussing salary, according to Bulls. He advises, don't be the high school graduate who lands their first job and then gets the rude awakening upon opening their first dismal paycheck, the moment when they say they definitely want you. Prepare for this discussion by thoroughly researching average salaries in your field and at that organization. Keep in mind that you're in the midst of a discussion. Identify a possible salary range and work your way up to that level of compensation from there. If you're in this position, think about how much a person in a similar position would make. Then, find a number in between. Salary.com and Glassdoor.com, for example, can give you an idea of what you can expect to make in your field. Talking to other people is also beneficial. Another person's opinion is very likely to be the most accurate. You'll also find out about unexpected tax deductions or reductions in your tax bill. Your goal is for them to pay the most, and their goal is to pay the least. He cautions against being the first to offer a specific number. Whoever mentions a salary figure first usually loses when the numbers don't line up. We can speculate this till the cows come home, there are theories, but all we know for sure, is that it is true. If an employer asks us what kind of salary we're looking for, a trick rebuttal is to ask, well, you created this position, so you must have some figure in mind, and I'd be interested in first hearing what that figure is. As a final point. Finding a job always involves a certain amount of luck. However, with the help of bulls and a little bit of effort on our part, we have a better chance of getting the job of our dreams. We've talked about the current state of the job market, the advantages of using a parachute over other job hunting strategies, and some concrete tips for the job search to come. Keep reading for more. This book is about jobs, but more importantly, it's about life and hope, writes Bulls in his concluding paragraphs. We're not just aiming for a good life or even a successful one, we're aiming for a better one. But rather, a life in which we face the obstacles and challenges that come our way with grit, determination, and grace, as we persevere through them. The who always precedes the what, so keep that in mind as you embark on your journey. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook. Thank <laughs> you.